All right. Um, this is going to be my first video in quite a while. Uh, the reason I decided to make this was because I re just uh, played against his opponent on ladder. He's using a technique that I have found difficult to counter in the past, and I thought I would um, demonstrate exactly how it was that I figured out how to counter at this game. So let's uh, just skip ahead a little. I'm going to spoil what my what my opponent is going to be doing. He is going to be going for uh, two st a two starport Banshee Marine Hellion all in. Uh, I ignore that. It was what what happened was my keyboard was messing up for some reason that I don't entirely know why. Um, I'll quickly skim through my build order as well. Um, so first I get a 13 gateway, 14 gas, send the probe out to scout on 13. Um, and just keep on producing workers. Pylon on uh, 16, and then guys into gas. Meanwhile, I scout him at this point. I see his uh, setup here. I see he's got... he's just producing marine. This is nothing right now. I can't tell anything from this. I don't see his gas at all. So then I start building a zealot after my cybernetics core. Continue building uh, probes. A little bit behind on that. Um, gonna start producing a stalker as soon as this zealot finishes. I do miss this SCV. I thought that it had left the base. That was stupid of me. I should have scouted around my base first of all. Um, clever move on his part. So then I get a pylon at around 25. I'm going to be getting another stalker in a moment, but more importantly, this stalker, this zealot, and this probe, which uh, got took some fire from his first marine and then retreated to this watchtower to uh, watch over things, they are going to be poking up into my enemy base to scout. Um, meanwhile, uh, Nexus goes down on 30 supply. That's very important. Um, so I scout up the ramp, I see, I'll just pause for a second to explain what I see here. I see that he's got a reactor building and a bunker going. What this says is 111. Um, it's, it, the, the reason that the uh, 111 will get this uh, reactor and this bunker is because, first of all, it's not going to be producing that many marines early on, or, or any marauders, in fact, so it's very vulnerable to things like the foregate, which is why you need a bunker up here in order to defend that. You need to be able to um, have something to keep it good uh, health to keep all your marines in. Uh, so, and the reactor is so that you can pump out a lot of marines t to go along with your siege tanks and your banshees because you don't want to be wasting uh, gas on more factories for more hellions, and marines are just plain good. Uh, so from this, I can see that my response needs to be um, another gas. I'll uh, play to start the game again. Another gas, another robo, which I put up here, and then um, a couple more gateways, and then just defend with those. So. It, Meanwhile, here's the starport. This is all going exactly as I had predicted. Um, so we're just going to skim ahead a little bit. I f his probe is SCV, I'm sorry, finally scouts absolutely everything. He knows that I'm playing the standard, which is not good from my perspective, but it's not particularly bad. Standard is the best way to defend. Meanwhile, he's getting a medevac. It looks like he will be going for this... Uh, four Hellion drop, which is quite powerful if they can get into the mineral line. Um, meanwhile, I'm getting out of very fast observer because I need to see what's going on. I've got three stalkers out so far. I get a fourth and then I warp in um, another sentry because I my reasoning is I want to have lots of sentries with lots of energies. See, at this point, I'm still pretty sure... I I'm actually going to back up for a second. Give me a moment. Um, at this point, I'm pretty sure that he's just going to be going for the standard uh, marine tank banshee all in. I haven't scouted his base yet. My observer is just going to be going out there. So I say that I'm going to need to have sentries with high energy for that guardian shield uh, to reduce the damage from the marines and to uh, force field off uh, marines so that they can get uh, sandwich between my zealots and... Uh, force fields, pretty much. So, it, in any case, this turns out not to happen, and the uh, sentries end up not being as useful as they could be, but you know what? It's a thought that counts. So, in the meantime, uh, I, I'm going to show you exactly what went on from my vision. Um, let's turn off the camera. I'm building some pylons out on the map, because this allows me to do some cool little tricks with where my units are situated that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. I'm going to have to build... Whoop, pause. Okay, you saw that? A, his um, his 
Medivac just came into vision. I actually saw it a little bit earlier as well, so I'm just going to back up for a second. So we're just, let me watch that again. Just, this is important. This is the most important thing that led to me winning the game, is that I just barely was able to see that red dot on the minimap for a second, uh, right about, I think I saw it right about now. But anyway. Oh, there it is. There it is. I, I see the medevac. I'm running around, and I'm able to repel it just by having my stalkers back here. Now, it's important to note that this wasn't just a lucky coincidence. Um, it wasn't just, oh, he has his... Um, he, he happens to have decided to send a medevac with Hellions. If this were ordinary Banshee Harass, which he will be starting shortly, um, he would have had the same exact problem because my stalkers, his cloak wouldn't have been up in time and my stalkers would have been able to defend. And meanwhile, I was norm normally I would have gotten a second um, uh, observer to just hang around by my base defend against cloaked banshees, but in this situation I saw the medevac. I knew that he wasn't going for cloaked banshees and so I was able to or at least I would know in a second for sure that he wasn't going for, like, Delayed Cloak, which is terrible, by the way. Delayed Cloak is not a good thing. <laughs> um, that I knew that he was not going to be doing any kind of cloaking action, and so all I needed was the one observer to check out what was going on in his main. Um, one thing that I should have done differently is this probe should have gone right to the Watchtower, because I do need to see when he's moving out of his base. That's very important. So in the meantime... I'm going to play this game. So I go into his base, I scout that he's got the um, starport going up. My, I have my uh, observer just going to chill here for a little while. Um, and meanwhile I'm just producing a lot of immortals. I haven't scouted the second starport yet. I will in just a second though, and that's when my second decision comes online. And this this was actually completely lucky. I realized, oh shoot, he's probably got stuff coming from the other direction. And so it, the end result was that I managed to catch him off guard. That was lucky. And so meanwhile, my observer has scouted his second starport going down, going down, and no tech lab on the factory. So I know that immortals are kind of useless. I get another one just because. And But then I get these three more gateways, bringing me up to a total of six gateways. And then I'm going to be getting a um, Twilight Council to allow myself to have Blink. So then I'm just leaving my... Um, Talkers over here, he, he drops them again, but then I've already got the pylon going up there, so I'm able to see it coming. Bring stalkers back, uh, and now his drop has done nothing. This was a waste of resources, didn't uh, give him anything in this game at all. So right now, all he's trying to do is build up an army uh, with his um, two starports uh, to try to get back into this game. Um, he's got a bit too much gas, but I don't really know Terran play that well, so I won't criticize him for that. That might be natural at this stage of the game. Meanwhile, Twilight Council going up, a lot more Stalkers warping in. I'm now producing pretty much pure Stalkers and some Zealots, getting two more gases in order to increase my uh, production, or to increase my gas production so I can get even more Stalkers. And now you'll notice that I have them spread out around my base so that no, pretty much no matter where he drops that uh, medevac, I'll be able to counter it. It, he, it turns out he just reunites his army, but still, this was a, a good little way to improve things. Meanwhile, I'm going to be sending my probe out to the Watchtower like I should have done earlier to go and make sure I see his attack coming in. He just he pulls a lot of SCVs uh, for this attack, which makes it pretty much an all-in. Um, wouldn't call this the... Well, you know what? At this point, he was so far behind that he might as well have. So, meanwhile... Meanwhile, I am Chrono Boosting Blink. I managed to uh, sort of scout this uh, attack moving in with my probe. I scout the uh, Hellions, and then I send another probe out to go and try to work its way around to his natural, and that's when I notice that his whole attack is coming in. My response? Force field off. I lose my uh, sentries alarmingly quickly, but you know what? It doesn't matter. They weren't actually going to be doing that much anyway. K okay, this is where I'm going to pause. I'll, I'll just quickly run through this uh, battle for the first time and then run it through a second time in slower motion. So here we see I'm fighting. I'm going to be warping in a round of units in just a second. Oh, look, more units. He's got no more units coming, but I do. Um, Blink is about to finish. All good things in the world. Um, 
And so I'm able to mop this up pretty handily. Uh, nothing too much to note either way. I get blink, I blink forward, kill his um, banshees, and then everything just ends up dying. And I've got an army, he has no army. I have an economy, he has no economy. I'm in the game and he is not, so that's my win. Um, so now let's just back up for a second and take a look at exactly what happened in that battle. So, okay, so let's just quickly skim forward a little bit. Okay, here we go. So first thing, the first most important thing is my stalkers right now are everywhere, they are not here. So my first response, force field off the ramp. This is an important one because it suddenly stops him. Now, let's just take a look at what he has. He has a very small banshee count. I don't know if there are any more out on the map. I don't think so, which makes his attack very weak. Um, Hellions are not good at dealing with stalkers at all. Banshees at least deal good damage to stalkers. Hellions don't. Um, and meanwhile, uh, He's got a lot of SEVs and a handful of Marines, but this is not a very strong force. What he does have going for him is this point defense drone, which will allow him, which w pretty much what it does is it nullifies stalker shots in the area, which means that my DPS will be greatly reduced. So let's see what I do to deal with that. I'm going to move forward. My stalkers will immediately just go and snipe that point defense drone, meaning that suddenly it is useless. Now, one thing I did wrong was I did not establish a good concave. This is not good. This means that his units can generally be attacking more than mine. I should have grabbed a handful of these units and just moved them up here to start attacking. And then suddenly I would have had a perfect concave and I would have won this battle twice as fast with half the losses. Um, meanwhile, all of his SCVs are dying very quickly. Um, he still has these banshees dealing a ridiculous amount of damage. His marines will end up dealing a lot of damage just because they they deal a lot of damage. But he's got no point defense drone. My stalkers simply deal too much damage. Immortals help too, but they aren't quite as critical. And so then I just can move in and kill him. And so that's the end of it. Uh, skim to the end. Woohoo, I win. So if I would have to... Um, if I would have to... I, okay, I just need to look at my... Ah, oh, 120. That's that's good for me. Um, it, that don't, don't worry about that. That's just my own personal enjoyment. Uh, it, it's just how fast... A, APM, how fast I was moving my hands. doesn't actually affect how well I was playing, but it makes me feel good about myself. So the reason I won this game was, first of all, the most important thing was the four stalkers here. If you scout these going for the 111, he is not going to be sending anything up out of his main, across the map, and into your base via this path, except sometimes a couple Hellions. What I did was I left my Zealots and Stalkers, Zealots and Sentries right here, so that if he tried to do some kind of Hellion run by, I could just force field off the ramp, and suddenly, instead of having to deal with them bouncing between my bases, I would only have to deal with them in one base, um, which is a very powerful way of going about it. It means that you're much less vulnerable to these kinds of uh, attacks. And then I kept my uh, stalkers in my main because this, because that is where his banshee was going to go. If instead, let's say, th this spawning position is actually impossible for this map, but let's say he had spawned here, I probably would have left my stalkers down here or maybe like over here or so somewhere like in a reasonable area that they could bounce back and forth between main and natural, um, because it would be much easier for him to get to my natural than to my main. Um, but it is not a... but it is just so, so safe just to have a few stalkers back here. And the other thing is that I only got four stalkers to begin with. Um, stalkers are expensive. They're ridiculously expensive. When you start producing stalkers, your money just evaporates. Um, so by deciding that I was going to get that uh, early quantity of uh, stalkers and then just be producing zealots and sentries at my ramp, I was able to produce a lot more um, probes, stay a lot safer, and um, 
get my economy and tech ramped up to an aggressive point in a very short amount of time. Um, that was ultimately the reason that I won this game. There are some nice little details like, oh, I, I got this unit or that unit, but the main thing is um, that I had units to defend against this harass, allowing me to produce a strong economy. If I had decided to go for, say, instead of um, my large warp gate count, if I had gone for Phoenix, that probably would have worked. Um, like Phoenix, Zealot, Sentry, that would have done just fine. Um, stalkers happen to be probably the best thing to go against him, but it's mostly about the um, the defense and then the macro up. So that's how you defend this all in. Um, I, I thought this might be useful. Probably haven't seen it too much on ladder, but this this also translates into how to defend the 111 in general, which is the uh, Marine Siege Tank Banshee push. You need to, first of all, defend against the early economic harass. Second of all, build up a strong uh, economy. And then third, produce the... Um, produce the appropriate units in the appropriate quantities to be able to crush his push. In general, against the 111, I should probably specify what you want to do against that. Uh, against the 111, you want to be producing a lot of uh, zealots, sentries, and immortals. Like, I would, if if I had scouted siege tank production, I wouldn't have stopped immortal production. I would have had like four or five by the time his attack started. Um, I would have also had a large count of zealots. Uh, but instead I scouted him going for something else, so it wasn't necessary for me to build uh, as many immortals or zealots or anything like that. Uh, second is, um, if you, it, then against this build, the uh, 2k, uh, two port banshee, you want to be producing um, a lot of stalkers. Uh, that's pretty much all. I hope you enjoyed watching, hope this educated you a little bit. Um, I thought it was I, well, I certainly do think this was this is useful because now I can defend this all in. Usually, it used to kill me. Uh, thanks for watching. See you later.